Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In this video, I will show how to use Mini Tools Partition Wizard to recover lost and deleted partitions. A partition is a section of the hard drive's total capacity. An average and typical drive can have four or even five partitions, known as volumes, for different purposes ranging from system reserve to manufacturer recovering tools. The MBR, or Master Boot Record, stores information about the partitions on the hard drive, known as the partition table. The table is like a directory containing pointers to the location of each partition. This information can become corrupted for various reasons. Some volumes simply disappear. Disk management may show unallocated space where a volume should be. It may show a volume that wasn't there before, known as phantom volumes. Some errors you might see are bad or missing partition table, error loading operating system, inaccessible boot device, and so on. At this point, it is best to check the BIOS or UEFI to see if the hard drive is being detected. And if not, then you may want to check the cables because this could be a hardware issue. The key to a successful partition recovery is knowing the size and location of the missing volume. Now, if this was a single volume, the recovery is a lot simpler. But when dealing with multiple partitions, the job became complicated. For this demonstration, we are going to focus on disk three. Uh, it's a 500 gigabyte drive. And as you can see, it shows it's all unallocated. So what we'll do is to recover the partitions. We are going to click on partition recovery here at the top. You will see this window appear. We'll go down to click next. Now you'll come to this window. Currently, it shows a disk one, which is the primary drive, and that's not the one we're going to work with. What we need to do is select disk three. This is the one I'm going to work with. Now, your drive may be different. This is only for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to choose next. Now, this gives you the next following options. You can do a full disk, which will scan the entire disk from beginning to end. Uh, it'll also do an allocated space. Uh, for instance, if you have a, a partition that's missing, uh, this will help you locate that partition, which I will demonstrate here momentarily. Now, for the most more experienced users, uh, you could use a specific range. Uh, this allows you to select which logical block address to start and where to end to locate the particular partition. Now, this is for mostly the advanced users. Now, for most of you, you'll be using either full disk or an allocated space. So let's go ahead and we're going to choose full disk. Now you have two scanning methods. The quick scan will restore your partition if the partition was lost or deleted and that they are continuous. Now, if it does not find what you're looking for, then it's preferred that you use a full scan. So let's go ahead and try the first scan, the quick scan first. When you click next, it's going to do a quick scan. Here you'll see the first partition that it's found, which is lost and deleted. It shows the filing system that it was using, the label that was on the partition, the starting point and the ending point the size that was used, and the total size of the drive. Now, as you can see, as I said earlier, there are multiple partitions. So I can tell you that this is not the one we're looking for. So what we'll do is go back and we'll do a full scan. And then we'll click Next. Now up here at the top, you're going to see the scanning progress. This is going to show you the sector that it's on and the total sectors it's got to reach. And this shows the current uh, location that it's scanning at this point. Down here, you'll see a list of all the ones that it's currently detected. Now, depending on the data composition, this could take some time. So just let it go ahead and do the scan and then check on it later and we'll see what it shows. Here we have the complete list of everything that the scan had found. Uh, here you'll see the filing system. Uh, this indicates what filing system that the partition was using, the label of the partition, 
the starting point or the beginning of the sector that the partition starts and the ending uh, sector that the partition ends. Uh, this is the amount of space that was being used and this is the total size of the partition. Over here it shows uh, if it was lost or deleted. Now you can select any partition you need uh, and you can see down at the bottom what will the partition look like as it's placed on the drive. Now you'll notice there's a long list here and it's quite long, but this is where if you see a list like this to where you need to know some information about that particular partition that you're looking for. Um, here, if you double click a partition, this will open a window to show you everything that was contained in that partition. This will kind of help give you an idea if this is the right partition you're looking for. Now, the partitions that was on the other drive, there were five. And this looks a little interesting because, you know, it's going to be difficult to determine which one it is. Now, I do know that the first partition was this one here. And you can see down here, this is the beginning. This is the boot sector. Uh, here is the Windows one. The, this is the one I was looking for. Now you can see it shows here uh, where this location of the drive was. Now you'll notice how these other ones have suddenly grayed out. And over here, the status has also changed where it shows they're overlapping. Now, if you choose a partition, it's gonna gray out the ones that don't fit because of where the current one's located. Now you'll also see down here and there was a recovery partition. Now you can see it narrowed it down even further. And then here, there was this one here. This one was used for uh, recovery to the, the startup tools. Now, if you're not sure, you can always double click and this will show you what was in it. And as you can see, it did have a, a recovery partition part to, for the recovery tools. But as you can see, this is the selected partitions that I want to, uh, to recover. Now, once you have some selected, you can go down here and choose finish. Now, you're gonna see the final complete, and you'll notice that it matches everything that sits below it in disk four. This is because disk four is the original disk. This one here was a clone which I will cover that later on in these other videos as how this worked. And this right here gives me an idea, okay, everything matches the way it should be. So it's important to understand the information about the partition. It makes it much easier to be able to locate the partition you're looking for so you'll be able to recover it. Once you confirm everything is correct, come up here and click apply. Now it's gonna recommend that you close all the apps. So please close any apps that you have running and then choose yes. Now it's gonna take a little bit for it to proceed. Once it's finished, it's gonna reload and refresh the drives. Now you get the message here that says successful. Uh, all pending changes have been applied successfully. Just choose okay. Now, if we check our file explorer, we should be able to access the contents of that drive. Now, as I open our, uh, the PC, uh, you'll notice these are all the drives that are connected. This one is the one that we were looking for. Now, if I double click it, I can view everything that's on it. Now, let's say that in this example, disk three, uh, as you can see, I made some changes to it and I deleted the one partition that we saw earlier, which was this one here. And you'll see that this one here is no longer there. Now, let's say that you are having the same problem. Uh, your um, partition's missing, is unallocated. So what can we do? Well, we'll go back to partition recovery. Continue, uh, next. We're gonna select disk three, choose next. And you'll notice here that it shows a preview of the current condition of the drive. Now, in the last earlier, we did full disk, but let's just show, okay, well, we have this unallocated space here. 
To save time, we'll just choose unallocated space. And this is the area that it's going to scan for a partition. Choose Next. And we're going to do the quick scan. Now, once the scan is completed, you're going to see the results. And let me make this window a little bigger. And you'll see here, these check marks show that these are existing. These means that these are currently active. You have this one here, same thing. These are the ones that's currently on here. But you'll see here, it shows lost and deleted. So what we need to do is put the check mark back on here. You'll see it reappears on here like it should. We'll choose finish. Now on here, you're going to see what it's going to look like now. And we're going to choose uh, partition recovery. And we're going to choose apply. Apply is pending changes. Now you're going to see right here where it says OK. And now the partition has returned. Now in this scenario, we have the partition that's been deleted here. I did this intentionally. Now, what I'm going to show you here is where you can choose specifically which area of the drive to scan for a partition. Now, this is more along the line of um, expert use or, you know, because you really have to know exactly which sectors you're looking for. Now, this one here, we'll just go back up here to choose partition recovery and then go to next. We'll select disk three, choose next. And the first two we've shown are already, and we're going to do this one where we can sp specify a range. Now, you can see this one here. Uh, you can also see this one here. And as you can see, it will automatically update some information if you know exactly where to look for. Now, since this is unallocated, then this shows where that per starts and ends. Now, if you need to clarify uh, if it's a big chunk, then if you're not sure, you can select this area as to where that partition might be. But you will have to know some kind of knowledge as to exactly where the sector is at or a range where that sector was at when the partition was located. Now, once you've selected the area and then choose next, you'll choose a quick scan. Now, if this doesn't work, you can always do a full scan and then that will do a deeper scan. So we'll try the first one here. We'll choose next and it's going to do the process. Now, again, it does show this one right here, uh, which is unchecked. And if you look a little bit to the right, you'll see where it says lost deleted. So we'll just select that one. You'll see how it reappears. Choose finish. Now you'll see where the partition has reappeared. Over here, the operation is pending. We'll choose apply, choose yes, and now it's completed. Now my partition is back to where it belongs. Well, this concludes this video. I hope the information was helpful to help you be able to recover your partition that you've had deleted or became missing. Uh, there are multiple ways that you could do this. Now, if for some reason that this process does not work, then you can also use the data recovery module, which I will show you later on, and to how you can use this to recover your data. Well, this has been a presentation by ES Repair. I am Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.